Hey guys, welcome to another episode of LFA Shop Shop. This week we're going to do a tray and we're going to do some brakes on the toy lace. Alright, so the first job for this episode is the tray. So what I want to do with this thing is just make it look nice and farmy, nice and agricultural. Um, just get some, I've just got some pine from Bunnings. Just nice and simple, nice and flat. Let's get into that. All right, I'm back from Bunnings with all the loot. Got some long stuff for the floor and then these guys for the crossbars. So first of all, I'm gonna to have to clear all this stuff off which is fine, but then the bars are gonna go on these already metal bars. Screw those in and then put the planks on. Should be really simple and should not take very long. Let's clear all this stuff off. All right, I got the tray cleared off. Just need to give it a brush down because there's a fair bit of rust and stuff on the ledges. And then I'll get the wood in here and start cutting them and screw them down. All right, we got those five bars cut length. Hopefully my uh, wood teacher doesn't see that because that was a misery. I don't know what's going on with that saw, but it'd get like three quarters of the way through and then just bind up on the guard, I think. So that was a bit of a pain. I have got like a nice drop saw. Actually, it's Emily's, um, but it's probably far too late for that and far too loud for that. It's too loud for that, but we're done now. So now I'm gonna grab some screws and screw this down and then I'll get the planks in here and screw those down. Times like this, all that cleaning is super handy. So two boxes of countersunk timber screws. Um, speaking of cleaning, I am doing more cleaning. Doesn't really look like it, but I've got a free bench there, which has got question mark parts on it. And this has got K16 stuff on it. And I will mention there is another car in the corner, which I may have may or not have shown you by now. So the wagon is gone also. That's another story. Um, not gone for good, gone to the panel beater. This stuff's going to get sorted out and then I'm building the tray so I can put some stuff on here, sort it out and chuck it up in the mezzanine. So this is going to be my ladder, so I need to build a tray. <laughs> Alright, so we've got all those bars screwed down. Um, pretty thin gauge screws, so I probably should put something a bit stronger through there. We'll see how we go. Uh, I'm going to chuck the boards on here now at least get them laid on and then spaced out and put a couple of screws in. I might not get it finished, we'll see how we go. All right, we've got the trail done. It's pretty agricultural, which is exactly what I was going for. And this treated pine will uh, age horribly so that's good now i need to do a headboard of some description um, and i'm also going to cut some holes in this tray at some point so that's why i'm not too fussed about it possibly a hole for the radiator and then i'm thinking i'm going to mount the fuel tanks like recessed into the um tray so they're not as tall and you can actually get to them a bit easier so onto the headboard i've got four of these slats i think i'm going to use three in the end um, if I put one at the bottom and one right at the top, there's about a 15 mil gap here and here, which is plenty um, and not too much. So I probably should reinforce the middle bit, but I'm not going to because you don't really put a whole lot of weight there and the fuel tank will be in the way. So it shouldn't really matter. So I'm going to screw these on. I've just got some, uh, I think these are 10 gauge like metal screws. So they should go through the wood pretty easy and then seat in there nicely. Um, I will angle the end of this timber. Uh, probably not tonight because it's going to make a whole bunch of noise, but I will do that at some point. And let's get into it. Turns out I can't count, I'm going to have to use all four boards. I read it as 480, not 580, so I'm going to have to use all four boards. All done. So now that I've screwed that on there, I'm not 100% sure if I actually want to chamfer this. Um, depends where everything sort of lines up. 
Normally that's heaps in your way of your vision, but because the tray is actually not that much wider than the cab, might be okay. So I'll leave it for now. I'll get everything else back together and see if I want to chop it. Um, I'll just follow this black um, RHS. Just cut it on a weird angle. So, so here we go. All right, now we have a tray. Let's put it to use, get the trans up here and get the kegs up here. All right, while I jack this up, I'll tell you the story of the trans. So this had to come out anyway because of the engine swap that I did. Um, so for those, for those of you who don't know, this had an LS3 in it, which is a six liter or LS2. Um, and now it's going to just a 5.7 out of a VT Commodore. So the trans had to come off regardless. But what I did do is put the stall converter in and thought there was three clunks, but I think there was only two. So, so if you put the stall converter in, there should be three clicks, um, three clunks. So there was only two, which means that the converter wasn't seated all the way. So when I bolted it to the engine, it um, was hard up against the back of the engine. There should be sort of like a um, five to 10 mil gap for the converter to the flex plate. There was not. So I may have that damaged some things inside the trans. Um, so most commonly when that happens, you snap an ear off the trans, like one of these bolt holes, or you bust the oil pump because there's two little tangs in there that um, meet up with the converter. So I took it around to my mate's place. He pulled it apart for me. Luckily, no broken oil pump, but the low range uh, band or like a selector band or whatever you want to call it, um, that was actually bro uh, broken and like worn out. So someone had not put it in properly by the looks of it um, and then driven the car and it had done some damage. So that band was only a hundred bucks um, with a seal kit and a filter kit and all that sort of stuff. So it was pretty cheap fix in the end. I'm glad I did it now until rather than putting it in the car and then realizing that I didn't have low gear and having to pull it out again. So this trans should be all good. Um, it can go back in once the engine goes back in. That's the story of my lifting trans. All right, so now that the tray's done and it's covered in things, it's time to mount the fuel tanks. So I wanna cut a hole in the front of the headboard and I'm gonna put it in dead center and recess the fuel tanks down into the tray a little bit so it's a bit easier to reach. Originally, the plan was to put it off to one side or the other um, and then have it on top of the tray. But with that, I'm quite short and this is quite tall. So getting the fuel nozzle in will be quite a mission. You probably have to climb on the tray um, and fuel up. And that's just asking to get looked at. So just gonna recess it into the tray a little bit and make my life a lot easier. So I'm gonna get in here and cut these two circles out. And then I can slide the kegs in and they can sit sunk into the floor. Um, I think it's gonna be about half, which will be about perfect for the um, filler. So I'll cut these out and we'll get them in there and we'll see what it looks like. It's much better. So bang on halfway, which is good. So now I can actually reach the um, filler and the breather. This one's the breather, I can swap them over. So I prefer the filler on the driver's side. So I will swap them over and I can get to that and I can put a fuel nozzle in it and it'll be sweet. So obviously I need to make some framework under here and you know make it actually attached, but that's what I'm going for. Just be some sneaky little kegs hanging out the top. All right, so we've got those fuel tanks sitting in place. I've just realized that I cannot mount them fully until the trans is in, because the trans actually swoops up right about where those tanks are. Um, so I'm gonna have to lift them accordingly with the trans. So I've gotta wait till the trans and the engine are back in to mount those properly, but the idea is there, the height's about right. If they come up a little bit, that'll be fine. So the next problem is gonna be the wheels and brakes. Um, so I haven't got any brakes yet, but what I'm doing is that master cylinder stuff for the IS300 you saw in the last episode. Um, still haven't finished that, but it's on its way. The ideas are turning over. Um, so I thought I'd start looking into actual calipers and discs. So this has got front drum brakes. They're absolutely massive. Um, so I'm gonna jump into ripping those off and then we'll show you all the pieces and then we'll see how we go for actually making a brake system. All right, so I've got both of the front hubs apart here. So we've got rid of the parts I don't need and I've kept the stuff I do need. 
Um, so this is a dust seal. So in the back of the hub, this guy sits on the spindle or the stub axle and just sort of floats in this groove here. So that stops the dirt getting in. And then this guy here sits in the back, nice and flush. Obviously there's no bearing in there. And that keeps the dirt or the grease, the, the dirt out and the grease in. So this is important. This is important. And then the bearings are knackered. So I'm gonna need new ones of those. And then we've got the castle nut, which is pretty standard. We've got the front washer, which is pretty standard as well. And that's pretty much it once we get new bearings. So the bearing race goes in there, if you haven't seen how a stub axle goes before. And then you've got the tapered roller, and you've got the dust seal, and then the other dust seal. So it's a bit of a process, but I need to get some new bearings. So that's on the list. The next job is finding a rotor, which sits over this, sits far enough back, mounts from the front, um, is six stud, is small enough to fit under the wheels, and also not super expensive. So I've been to Sprints this morning. Um, we've got a few options for disc rotors for this thing. Um, one is a 98 petrol high ace. Then we've got like a 90, early 90s, I think, late 80s Hilux, um, full drive. And then a 2015 Triton. And all of those rotors are about the same size, about the same offset off the back. Um, I need about 65 mil. And then they also all have a ball size in the center that's big enough and the stud pattern's correct. So there's a lot of options there. Um, unfortunately, two of those are really expensive. Uh, the High Ace and the High Lux are both very expensive, brand new. The Triton stuff's actually a bit cheaper, um, even though the car's a lot newer, but I'll see if I can find some good secondhand stuff with matching calipers, and we'll go from there. So that's all I've got on this front at the moment. Um, these two hubs are quite worn in here. You can see that lip there. Um, that's probably like a millimeter or two. So the race has actually just been sort of like wandering around or spinning and wearing that out. So I'm gonna to need to get these machined and possibly put a slightly bigger bearing in. Um, we'll see how we go. The back on both are fine. Um, just the front's a bit chewed out. So have to do something about that. But that'll be later. That's all I've got time for this week. I will continue with the brakes and the tray and stuff next week. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week.